Wah. Oh shit, I meant to... Off stream, I meant to farm... Um... Triads in the first main dungeon for an AoE attack that doesn't cost five gems. And now I'm stuck in the middle of this fucking... meets back up, having gathered all three of the things needed to modify the sand skiff. You've brought the sturdy pole, Legol has the wheels, and Trollis has oh, the Oh, did I accidentally skip something? Are you sure I can use your whip? Polka asks, and Trollis gives a little nod. Trollis turns her bag upside down. And, as advertised, a number of whips tumble to the ground. Doesn't your ringmaster need these? Legol gets a distant look on his face. A bit of pep in his step. Polka starts zipping around the sand skiff, making modifications. The modifications to the sand skiff are finished. The vehicle should be able to pass through the rocky wasteland without issue now. The group is thrilled, but suddenly, Trollis collapses. Polka hurries over to examine her. Somehow, she's suffering the effects of tinderwater poison. Beyond holding her close and squeezing her hand, there is little else you can do for Trollis. The battle with the flame primal flashes through your mind. During the struggle, Trollis threw herself in harm's way to protect you from the primal's attack. The poison must have entered her body through the wound she sustained in the process. I thought... I thought Keiichi Okabe didn't work on this game. But this song sounds very, very near. Granted, that doesn't mean that he did work on it. It might just be someone trying to emulate the sound, but... Despite downing some of Polka's medicine, Trollis remains languid. It seems that the effect isn't very strong. She needs a sanitary place to rest, Polka says, and the group decides to try to find one. suddenly jumps out in front of your group as you search for a place where Trollis can rest. 
Recognition dawns in you, and you're sure this is the ringmaster of the circus. At least, until he flatly denies it, saying you've confused him with someone else. Trollis rises unsteadily from the deck of the sand skiff, tilts her head to the side and says, You not ringmaster? The man looks at Trollis for a moment, then breaks into a delighted smile. Oh ho, you're one of my brothers from the circus. As he explains it, this man is the younger brother of the circus ringmaster. He works as a merchant who travels the world buying and selling all manner of rare articles. And to that end, he wastes not a moment in trying to strike up some business. Perhaps a gander at my wares, then. You briefly explain Trollis's condition and ask the man if he knows of a good place to rest. Why didn't you say so sooner? I've got some good info on that front, he replies with a wink. The merchant shares that he has heard of a village to the west wherein resides a brilliant apothecary. He's said to be a rather crabby fellow, but with any luck, you can get some medicine from him. And on top of that, find a place to rest. Two birds with one stone. You say a few words of thanks and quickly head off to the west in search of the village. The man calls after you. I'll be here with my compatriots for a while, so do pop by later. I need... Oh shit, I don't remember where the... Dryads showed up. It was here. Sick. Hello. Welcome.
Well, it wouldn't have... None of them were the triad skill anyway. I'm... I'm just gonna be trying to get this farm. I can unpause the VOD and that bot doesn't get caught on the VOD. I had the VOD recording paused while I was farming. Skills, you... Wait, why do I have... Why do I have poison and deadly poison in, in my... Oh, I still have the speed up on. Interesting. Oh, that's fair. I feel like you would go through a thousand bullets fairly quick, actually, but... I don't remember if the requirements for getting the, um, flip side. Oh, hi, Callista. I am right behind you. Okay. <laughs> Why does it say last stream? What? The title it says last stream. Oh, that was supposed to say late. Oh. I uh I would suggest changing it lest you give people a heart yeah. attack. I yeah. I don't remember of getting the flip side story for the uh game parlor. Oh. Well, I got it. Which okay, that's weird to me cuz in the last two games getting the flip side story for the different shopkeepers required you to talk to every one of them in every town 
So. No, it's not. Chip damage isn't real. Oh wait, I don't want to sell yet. Let me re replace my equipment first. Okay. That's funny. You head to the inn instead. Go spend lots of money at the other oh. shops. She concludes with a wink. Oh. The excuse this one gave for the breasting being free was go spend your money at the other shops. Merchant glances over at you with a troubled look on his face. You ask him if something is the matter. For reasons I can't explain, I need a wolf. Could you catch one for me? He pleads. He then procures a picture and shows it to you. It looks like this. I'd like one with a beautiful shiny coat, he elaborates. It should be two stars at the very least. Stars, you ask? To which he explains that each monster has a star-based ranking. The stronger the monster, the more stars it has. Of course, I shall see that you are handsomely rewarded for your effort, he tells you. Decide to accept his request, then take out a wolf card from your case. A delighted smile stretches across his face, and he asks if he can have some of its fur. Once you hand a tuft over, he quickly entwines it with his own hair. Behold! He exclaims with a grin. I'm even more dashing than before, no? I need to make a good impression on all of our patrons. After all, I'm the first person they see, and how I look influences the credibility of this entire business, he explains. After he's finished arranging the wolf fur on his head, he thanks you and hands you your reward. Shit, I'll take that. Oh. So this is how we're doing the true ending requirements for this game, huh? The merchant, recognizing your monster-catching prowess, 
wants you to bring him an orc child next. Just like the wolf, he asks for one that's two stars or above. I was about to ask if the if the second game even had that when I streamed it. It it technically sorta of did, but the cards were required. They they just were acquired. You got them from the main story. So Orc children are said to live in the desert, but dislike the sun's powerful rays. And yes, he wants an orc child. You make note of the information and bid the man farewell. Don't ask him what it's for. <laughs> I already have an orc child. Oh, it's only Why one star. Why are you giving star. this man children that do not belong to him? Because I I put the child in a card and kidnapped it myself in the first place. <laughs> Get in the fucking card. Get in the card, Shinji. <laughs> I know where I ran into orc children. I gotta go back to the dungeon I was just farming for an AoE skill in. And farm children. <laughs> that says wrong. On so many levels. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go try to get Trollis back in the party first, so she doesn't get behind on levels. <laughs> Children don't have rights, it's okay. But they do have lefts. Enough about women's rights, let's talk about women's wrongs. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. I probably shouldn't have the AoE still on the last person in the turn order on my party. I mean, done? but I found one randomly in one of the missions. This place feels eerily familiar. You open your pack and fish out a scrap of paper. What? You knew it. I, when did I pick this the up? Map says there's hidden treasure. When the hell did I pick this up? A moment, and soon discover an unnatural swell in the dirt. You claw at the earth with reckless abandon. Success. Buried treasure. Ecstatic. You fling open the lid and stash its contents in your bag. Oh, hell yeah. Um. I forgot to actually quit that ring. Oh, and it's plus two attack. Hell yeah. Wait, 
Wait, there's a safe setting? I've used one a little bit and I've seen it fucking kill people because they charged it too much, but I didn't realize that there was a a safety you option. A small village. This is probably the place the merchant mentioned where the apothecary lives. However, monsters suddenly appear and they're headed straight for the town. You can't let them attack the town for Trollis's sake too. You take off running to stop the monsters. These gargoyles just dragging their pedestals around with them. Battle time. Living statue. Okay. Like they aren't all living statues. remember the gargoyles shooting lasers in the previous games. I don't remember that one. Oh, sick. Unbeknownst to any, you manage to avert the danger. Now Trollis needs help. Hurry into the village. You and Lagol enter the village, leaving Polka caring for Trollis on the sand skiff. No sooner do you enter the village than a man's voice calls out to you. This here's the village of light. Make yourself at home and rest okay, what? your wearied spirits. The villager wears a curious headpiece, but seems polite and courteous. You get directly to the point and ask him if he knows about the apothecary. Ah, that would be me, he says, before offering to mix up some medicine if you're in a hurry. You explain Trollis's symptoms. And the man calling himself an apothecary smiles and says he can help 
right away. Afraid of the answer, you ask what it will cost. The man calling himself the apothecary laughs and assures you he has no need of payment. The apothecary hardly seems crabby at all, so you check again with him that he really is the one you're looking for. He answers that coming to this village changed him, made him realize that people need to live by helping each other. The apothecary suggests you take a wander about town while he mixes up the medicine. He adds, the folks about town are kind souls one and all, so feel free to ask them if you need anything. Legol says that he'll get Trollis and returns to the Sandskiff. You decide to walk around the village and find what you'll need to care for your friend. Welcome to the world of Voice of Cards. A giant statue towers above you, stern eyes seeming to glare a warning to trespassers. A giant statue towers above you, kindly eyes seeming to cast a protective gaze across the village. Oh, there's just an N here. After hearing your tale, the woman hands you her food. Make sure you all eat up and get all your nutrients. And if there isn't enough, you just let me know and I'll make more. Ha ha. She finishes with a hearty laugh. After hearing your tale, the proprietor of the inn beams at you and says, Don't worry your head over payment. Stop in and make use of one of our rooms as much as you like. You offer a word of thanks and feel a weight lift off your chest. Now Trollis will be able to rest somewhere comfortable. The boy looks at you and says, This would look nice on you, miss and hands you a crown made of gorgeous artificial flowers. You try to pay for it, but the boy counters with a smile. I gave it to you because I wanted to. That was nice. <laughs> the old man says, no person is an island. That's why we need to join hands and help one another. The amicable old comes man looks sus way. as hell. The medicine is finished. You take it from him and then try to head back Just to Just putting Trollis. that out there. But there seems to be quite some commotion at the entrance of town. Um. Wondering what could have happened, you hurry over. That's partly because that art, aside from the, um... Aside from the, like, the pig. You're worried about Trollis. Uh, hood he's wearing. Hurry that art is the from the first the game, fuss. where most of the characters that used that art were A fucking crowd brain dead. Of villagers has thronged the entrance to town. On the opposite side are Legol, Trollis, and Polka. Their earlier kindness seemingly an implausible memory. The group shouts, 
Get out now. You realize that the villagers are staring down. They're racist. <laughs> they seem somehow furious at her. Oh boy. Even the apothecary, who only just handed you medicine for her, has an expression of utter rage on his face. You attempt to intervene and put a stop to the trouble. But the villagers continue to bellow their anger. Suddenly, you hear a serene voice call out over the crowd. At the sound of it, the people fall incredibly quiet. A mysterious girl, young in years, emerges from within the awkwardly silent crowd. I beg your forgiveness for the way you have been treated by the villagers, she says. If you require a place for your sick friend to rest, please come to the Shrine of Light, she finishes, before leading the way. The apothecary heaves a deep sigh. Should have given you poison, not medicine. What a waste of good food, the woman says, regretting having given you something to eat. The boy notices you and then quickly hides the crown of artificial flowers in his hand from you. The proprietor of the inn takes one look at you before saying, no rooms here for you, with a click of the tongue. The old man takes one look at Trollis and then spits, strange ears, odd tail, repulsive. Uh, strange ears, this guy says in a town full of people wearing hoods with animal ears. Wow, so he's not only racist, but also a hypocrite. I see. Do you know what the solution to this is? Defenestration. Murder. Oh, that too. <laughs> Potentially murder. If you murder. someone from high, as soon as up high enough, the shrine in which yeah. then, lives, you know, you put Trollis and then it is also rest. murder, yes. That it's their fault for not having good enough fall damage resistance. Oh my god. You're relieved that you've managed things for the time being. When you speak with the girl, <laughs> she says, I've been waiting for you all. You haven't told the girl anything. So how is it she knows that? I know more than that. She goes on to describe much about your group. The monster attack on your village. Legol's cruel treatment. What happened to Polka's parents? What's your deal? Legol says, unnerved. The girl answers, the power of prophecy. She explains that due to her power, the people revere her as a religious guru. You've never heard that word before. A pop and star? So you ask, why? Why? Guru? Why? <laughs> this game is high fantasy. This series. A pop star. You ask if a guru is some kind of great person, and Legol nods. That's right, a mover and a shaker. Polka adds, a guru is the founder of an ideological group 
or the leader of one. In any event, the guru is clearly important to the village. You decide to ask her about the place. You ask why the once kind villagers became so angry. The guru explains in a measured voice. This remote village has, she explains, been the victim of many monster attacks over the years, which in turn means that many of its inhabitants despise all monsters. That hatred eventually took root in the village as a kind of religious doctrine. Thus, their behavior when they saw Trollis. You ask why the villagers were so kind at first. The guru explains in a measured voice. The village, she explains, adheres to a doctrine called the Light Faith. <coughs> She goes on to explain that the foundational principle of the light faith is to be kind to people. Thus, the villagers treated you with great kindness. And so there have been two absolute doctrines in here's, this here, village. Here's a two sentence be horror story to for you. And I feel the anesthesia take hold as I lie on the surgical table. Just before I pass out. <laughs> I hear the doctor say, move him to the penis explosion chamber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your dick explode. She gazes at the room where Trollis is sleeping and asks, Your friend is a monster, yes? You hesitate to reply, having vaguely suspected what Trollis actually is. The guru amends her words. Forgive me. Perhaps that expression wasn't oh my God. Yet, since she is also human. She is half human and half monster. What are your thoughts on that? She asks. It's true that monster blood may flow in Trollis's veins. Monsters, things to be hated. Ah. She is half monster. And then the game gave me an option to be racist too. But as you've traveled together. This town is literally Volta, just the American the South. offers another apology. The villagers were discourteous to your friend. And for that, I am sorry. I just remembered. I saw a truck. Actually, hold on. Let me let me see. Let me search something and make sure that it, the company does not like. Okay, now it it would. If someone looked it up, they they would find out where I live. Never mind.
Many of them lost family to monster attacks be right back. and are seized with hatred. All right. Stay safe. I ask you to forgive them, she continues, her voice tinged with hurt. Ah, right. Your group wishes to go to New Terra, yes? She says, breaking the silence. Stunning that your powers could even tell you that, says Polka in a low voice, and the guru nods serenely. She explains that there is a stone tablet in the ruins of a religious edifice to the northeast of town. Said tablet has the way to New Terra recorded on it. However, you should know, monsters have nested in the ruins, she adds. There's information on New Terra to be had, though, so you decide to go anyway, despite the danger. God damn it. I played, um... I, I played a little, uh, indie RPG maker game that a friend gifted me in the middle of a stream a few weeks ago, or last week, I think. Um, and I just, uh, was looking at the screenshots I ha I sent a friend and saw one of the dialogue boxes is a cat saying, I cannot even imagine how terrible adrenaline must feel in a recreational context, period. I am also a cough syrup addict. <laughs> Hold on, let me get the store page for this really quick. This game was really good. And incredibly funny. <laughs> the guru gives a little smile and says, I'm sure you will be all right. I have foreseen that you will be able to obtain the tablet and return safely. Trollis is sleeping soundly. Quite relieved, you thank the woman watching over her. She seems annoyed, but when you inform her that you're headed to the ruins, she quickly turns her attitude around and bows her head. The ruins were evidently a sacred site for this village, one where marriages, funerals, prayers for bountiful harvests, and other important rites were carried out. And the tablet was used in those ceremonies. You accept the woman's request, explaining that you were planning from the start to retrieve the tablet. You've no sooner gotten your response out than Trollis's eyes fly open and she bursts out, I come too. While she is a little unsteady yet, the apothecary's medicine seems to have done its work. You try to convince her to rest a little longer, but she insists on going to the ruins with you. At length, her persistence wins out, and you begrudgingly agree to take her along and head for the ruins.
Oh. It does not sell light stay rings. The next primal was ice. I mean, they haven't really mentioned a light primal, but it is a light worshipping village. I win. And I usually have, like, three games going at a time. You're quite surprised to see an open-air stall set up here. And I've been wanting to play this for a while. You poke your head into the stall just as the merchant within whips around to it's greet you. It's with a Y. I've got a collection of rare monsters, the merchant says, 
glancing to and fro as he removes the cloth covering a nearby cage. Ten thousand! Oh, shit. Freeze would be real nice. And I'm just buying that one because I don't want to have to farm Bizarre Rocks. Except that was only a one star. I'm going to have to farm Bizarre Rocks anyway. I'm all right. <laughs> it's all leather. He leans in close. Speak not a word of this to anyone. He whispers in your ear and breaks down his stall. No more shopping for you, it seems. Nothing? There. And I forgot to change my skills. matter that I didn't change my skills.
Okay. Oh, wait, no, I should probably... I should probably swap those. different characters with Oh, four. I'll take that. I do have something with with light damage, yeah. Forgot that I, the centaur does light damage. I know. a speed tie. Mm. 
And now we don't. Masterful victory! I should have put that on the goal. stands before you, large enough that you have to crane your neck to look up at it. You wonder how much historical value such a thing might have. Oh.
Stairs. Farmed orc children. What is this level layout?
Oh man. One HP. That's how it's done. These games have zoom options. Okay. You look at Trollis and ask, you okay? She gives a vivacious bounce, assuring you that she's as fine as she looks and that you don't have to worry. Perhaps she then realizes what you actually mean, so she continues to speak with some brightness in her voice. She reminds you that she has the circus troupe who accepted her without discrimination. And on top of that, she has kind friends who worry about her, 
and do their best to nurse her back to health when she falls ill. So of course she's all right. Of course, it's always when I'm trying to clear get one card added to the map that the fucking to battle. attack. Your group reaches an antechamber with three arrows inscribed on the floor. <laughs> Further inside, you can see a statue and what appears to be some kind of pedestal. To the right is a door, and by the looks of it, your only way onward. I'm pretty sure I know what this is going to have, or what this is going to do. 
The floor sinks slightly when you step on the arrow. And then... The statue moved. Wow. Why? The statue moved. Wow. Apparently, <laughs> it moves in the same direction as whichever arrow is stepped on. Who could have seen that coming? The statue is engraved with the words, Icon of Light. It doesn't seem like you'll be able to move it by hand. There is evidence of something heavy having been on top of the pedestal. Okay. It's the same number of moves regardless. slides on top of the pedestal and in that instant the door opens with a groan the door opens relieved that you can finally move on you decide to head through the door The statue engraved with the words Icon of Light rests atop the pedestal. It doesn't look like it'll be moving again. Yeah, having an AoE attack has been really helpful. Mm. 
Wait, I thought I put... Shit, I thought I put, um... A single target heal on... Polka. Sometimes you... No, it's on Crawless. That shouldn't have been 27. Unless they changed how the weakness works. That should have been 18. That's how it's done. block the way you attack them at once determined to make your way deeper into the ruins Masterful victory! Uh. 
I took one step. One step. What is this encounter rate? Okay. Battle time. I what? The monsters make no move to attack you, and instead seem to be focused on quiet prayer.
Oh shit. Get his ass. Hold on. You emerge into a wide open space with an array of stone tablets. Your excitement fades as you realize just how many there are. You glance down at your feet and spot a piece of paper on the floor. It's more angelic. God damn it. The scrap has a note written on it. To proceed, Align the tablets with matching patterns. Well, that's simple, Ligol says. He approaches the tablets, but then... The tablets oh, change position entirely on their own. a stone tablet with a different pattern. Try picking another one.
Come on. Really? Uh, yes, thank you. It's, it's gonna... Okay. You've managed to match two stone tablets. Keep it up. successfully flipped all of the tablets and now <coughs> with a groan the door opens feeling a bit mentally fatigued you decide to head through the door with your friends okay this is X P and this one doesn't a stone tablet with a pattern on it touching it no longer has any effect this one doesn't exactly match any of them but it's closer to one of the two variants of T Oh, I still have the speed up turned on. To battle.
What? Why? Salamander? What? That's, that's not a salamander. <laughs> Two-thirds of my options there were nothing. So... One HP. statue stands vigil here, looking almost as though it is taking the measure of those who pass through. Oh, sick. Battle time.
Okay. There we go. <laughs> of course. Discovered the stone tablet that has information about New Terra recorded on it. You rush over to the tablet, but suddenly. You guessed it a monster appears and attacks. Oh. Okay. The different letters for Angelic and Nier have changed a bit. The, um... The S, P, and... T, the one of them being the closest to T, that was for the angelic X in Replicant. Um, in Automata, there's no exact match for the one that was like a swirly sign, but one that I said was closest to T is actually S, and the one that was S slash X is just X. And then in reincarnation, the one that was P is back. Uh, the one that was S in Automata was back. And the one that was S in Reincarnation, S slash X in Reincarnation, and just X in Automata is S, W, and X in Reincarnation.
sometimes you get... Well, that doesn't matter, it's about to die. some writing on the stone tablet. You ask Polka to decipher it, but the script appears to be from a language that even one of his considerable knowledge has never seen. The four of you decide to ask the guru about the tablet. You decide to exit the ruined edifice immediately. You look at Trollis and say, you don't have to go into the village if you don't want to. She assures you that it's fine and comes along anyway. As you make your way into town, the apothecary approaches. Before you can say anything, the man blurts out an apology to Trollis. The sudden contrition Water! is a surprise, wow. and not I just see, yeah. to you. Legol and Polka are clearly taken aback, too. Thank you for the redeems. I am going to end in a moment, but I wanted to get through this part of the story tonight. The guru must have explained things. 
everyone in the village has accepted Trollis by the sound of it. you're doing well. The woman pays you absolutely no heed and eats with single-minded focus. The boy averts his eyes from your group. I have to get ready, he says, weaving flowers with considerable fervor. The proprietor of the inn is smiling at you once again. Please feel free to take a room if you need one. My, my, your ears and that tail are quite lovely, the man says to Trollis, his tone light and amiable. Fuck you, dude. The guru accepts the tablet and runs a loving hand over it. This little piece of stone is an integral part of our town's rituals. One might go so far as to call it the soul of the village. You find it all a little bit unsettling. Hoping to move the conversation along, you ask what is written on it about Nutera. The guru gives a deep bow of the head at your question. I saw that coming. You're stunned at the news. She lied to you in order to get you to retrieve the tablet. Your shoulders tremble as you ask, You tricked us? But the guru replies in a solemn voice, You do not need to worry. Nutera does exist. And I know the way there. It is found to the north, beyond a massive cliff that towers over the land called the End Wall. She goes on to explain that to get there, you must travel through the cave to the north. With that, she offers a final prophecy. What you seek shall be found in New Terra. There's something desolate in her expression. The moment you leave the shrine, you sense that something is amiss. The village is suffocatingly quiet. Polka lets out a little scream and points everyone at the is dead on the ground. The old man has breathed his last. Stay alert, the goal whispers so that only the group can hear. The old man is dead, his gentle face frozen. The boy is dead, surrounded by artificial flowers. Though it looks like she is just sleeping, the proprietor is dead. The woman is dead, but the hand on her full stomach suggests her end was met in satiety. 
a bottle of medicine has tumbled over next to the corpse of the apothecary. Having examined several of the bodies, Polka reports that the cause of their death appears to have been suicide by poison. You remember the desolate expression on the guru's face, and you realize you need to rush back to the Shrine of Light. But... Legol rears up and breaks the door open with a mighty kick. The guru is collapsed, bleeding on the ground. You run over to her and try to help her sit up. Her eyes flutter open and she looks over your group. They have all passed without incident then, she says with a feeble smile. You gaze into her unfocused eyes and ask, what did you? She said as much. They have a creed here in the village, and that creed is absolute. Be kind to people and kill monsters. And... Cool. This village's hatred for monsters runs deep, having taken root long, long ago. Those feelings cannot be changed, nor can the creed. The guru produces the stone tablet from the ruins. So long as we have this, our souls shall be guided to their rest, she murmurs. Trollis bursts into tears and says that this was all her fault. No, says the guru softly. It was mine. She was prepared for this and invited you in with full understanding of what would happen. Despite all of that, she still wished to get the stone tablet back from the monster. They were all tired. The many years of being caught up between their hatred and their creed had made the villagers and the guru alike exhausted with life. With one last word of thanks, the guru gently breathes her last breath. Thus did the monster-loathing village pass to dust, a visceral demonstration of what happens when you mix faith with hate. Yep, that's that chapter. And that's where I'm going to end stream after this recap. They were all racists anyway. <laughs> You came in right, uh... Right after the part where the apothecary said, um... Something about, like... You're still half-human and what we did was... Wrong. Uh, because when we got there, they you all... You and your companions dig. Dig long, deep holes. 
you feel it's only right to give the dead a proper burial. They started off really nice and then they met one of my party members who happens to be half monster and they said, Oh shit, she's half monster, she's a monster. We hate those. That's one grave complete. You let out a long sigh. You wonder how the others are faring. Which, like, their creed apparently was to be kind to people, but to kill monsters. So either way, they were... And, and then the last part was death to those who break the creed. So as soon as they met Trollis, they were going to fucking kill themselves. Because their religion demands it. There was no way to win. Even rest should wait until the graves are dug. But also, they jumped to the racism first. As soon as they saw someone who was half monster, so... You know... Except for the child who led the village. 